uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're gonna be kind of doing intro to React. Um, I assume a lot of you have probably done some looking into it over the past week um, and maybe beforehand, um, but this will be basically an intro. Um, and I'll start by just uh, sharing a little bit about me. So my name is Rio. I live in Portland, Oregon. Uh, coding is my passion. Um, and I'm a big fan of pets. I like music and art, and my favorite food is pie. Um, and so the goals for today, um, I want to start by kind of doing a recap of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, because um, those are all going to be important to know. Um, I assume all of you know uh, these already, but we'll do a little recap. Um, I'll go over some important JavaScript concepts. Uh, React is built on top of JavaScript. It uses JavaScript, and so um, it's basically, in a way, it's JavaScript code. Um, and so there's certain things in JavaScript that are pretty important to know, and you might not have used them that much, but I'll go over those because um, they can confuse you once you get to React. So I'm going to try to clarify those concepts. Um, we'll do a little background on kind of why React exists, why it was invented, and what it's used for. Um, the basics of React code. Um, and then setting up a React app, which is um, the first step towards doing this week's assignment. And then um, I'll see about doing an assignment walkthrough. That's my plan at the moment. Um, just showing you kind of start to finish uh, from creating a new repo on GitHub to walking through just step-by-step step and um, creating this app. Um, and a note on questions, um, feel free to stop me at any point. I tend to ramble. Um, and so, you know, I want, I'm here for you all. And so if uh, anyone needs clarification or questions or anything, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, yell at me, stop me. Um, I sometimes forget to look at chat or something. So um, just let me know. Um, don't be afraid to interrupt. And also I have dyslexia. And so I sometimes misspeak and uh, might end up confusing you even more. So I apologize in advance if I, um, yeah, and like misspeaking, but hopefully you can um, understand the basic ideas shouldn't be a huge issue, but sometimes I do and confuses people. Um, OK, so starting with just a recap. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are kind of the three um, coding languages that come together to build websites. And so um, pretty much every website is built using these three things. Um, and HTML, you can think of as being the noun. So what is the content that appears on your web page? Um, all of the kind of content, you can kind of um, think of that as being the HTML. Uh, CSS affects how all that content looks. So it's the styling. And you can think of CSS as being the adjective. So HTML is the noun, CSS is the adjective. And then JavaScript is the verb. So how do those elements interact with each other? Um, are new elements created? Are, you know, is there a way to delete elements? Um, <clears throat> basically any of the like uh, changes on your web page, um, how things look, um, you know, ele new elements being created or removed or any of that. That's uh, the role of JavaScript. And there's some amount of like crossover between all of these. Like uh, all HTML elements have a default styling. Um, so they have some default CSS. And you know, certain HTML elements will have 
certain functionality, like they can make your web page dynamic and function like JavaScript. So some HTML has like built-in styles and, and functionality, but uh, you use JavaScript and CSS to kind of extend on, on the basics. Um, so when you combine HTML and CSS or HTML and JavaScript, um, you can do a lot of cool stuff. And um, the kind of pairing of those two is what's called the DOM, document object model. And so that is basically in your JavaScript, you want to affect the HTML on your web page. Um, the way to do it is using the DOM. And you can basically affect any of your HTML or create new HTML inside your JavaScript using the DOM. Um, it's basically a representation of HTML inside of JavaScript. And I'm sure you've seen some of these so far. Um, query selector, append child, inner HTML, get element by ID. These are all um, methods, DOM methods that you can use in JavaScript to um, basically select or change the HTML. And there's a bunch more. These are just some of the most common ones that you've probably used. Um, so I meant to break this slide up into a few, but it's OK. Um, we're going to walk through this step by step. So um, so far, you've probably seen rendering some, like storing some state in JavaScript, and then rendering that state to HTML. And this is kind of the process that you would do it by default. Um, you would create an array. Well, in this case, we want to store it as an array. Um, you could do an array. You could do objects. You could do arrays of objects. Uh, a common thing you'll see is arrays of objects. Um, but in this case, we're keeping it simple. We have an array of strings, and each string is a dog name. So we have dogs. Lassie, Rex, and Sock. So that's step one is creating this variable to store our dog names. Uh, second step is rendering our dogs to the screen. How do we take these strings and put them onto our web page? Um, so that's this step, and you have this complicated for loop. You want to loop through the dogs array. So for let i equals zero, i is less than dogs dot length, i plus plus blah, 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 document create elements so or creating a, a list item element, um, setting the inner text of it to the dog name, and then appending it to the DOM. So this is kind of uh, the process that you might take to turn these strings into um, actual HTML elements. And I put pictures of dogs here. That's not actually what it would show if you really wrote this code out. It would show just the letter or the the words, the names. Um, but we're going to pretend that it's showing the whole images of these dogs. So there's Lassie, Rex, and Sock. Um, oh, someone asked, is it possible to have a copy of the slides at the end? Uh, yes, I'll definitely post a copy of the slides at the end. Um, they're kind of, they look decent so far, but uh, they're only halfway finished. <laughs> I didn't get very far through it. So at some point they will have to transition away from the slides, but um, yes, I will be posting them. Um, okay, how does everyone feel about um, this so far? Is everyone comfortable with storing an array of dog names, and then how you would render it to HTML. Is that looking familiar? Yeah, yes. Cool. OK, so the next step is, what if we want to add another dog? So we want to add Betsy here. And the way we do that, uh, well, 
one way is we could add Betsy just right in here. Oh, and I, I, I have a version with Betsy. I should fix that. Imagine Betsy's not there. No Betsy yet. Um, okay, so we still have the original array of dogs with just Lassie, Rex, and Sock. Um, we have this complicated loop for rendering them to the screen. Um, and I didn't write that all out because it was hard to fit them all on the screen. But we have this loop that renders the dogs to the screen. And then say we want to add Betsy later. So we've already made the dogs array, and then we want to add Betsy at another point. Say um, the user types into an input, and they uh, hit a submit button, and then we take whatever was in that input, and we want to like use that as the, um, the dog name. Well, we don't have that state initially in our original array, so we need to uh, basically get that state um, at some later point dynamically. So this is dynamically adding Betsy to the array. And you can see we don't have Betsy. Where's Betsy? We just have the same three dogs. And um, the reason is because we changed the state, but we didn't do the render loop again. We have to call this, we have to like uh, do all the code that it takes to render the dogs to the screen every time we change the dogs array. So anytime we add a new item or take away an item or whatever, we have to uh, re-render everything to the screen. Um, and it's kind of just, it's not, it's not too bad, but once you end up with lots of different state variables, and every single one of them might be changing in multiple places in your code, it starts to get unruly, confusing, because basically every time you uh, change your state, you have to remember to re-render it. And uh, that's just error prone and confusing. So the way to fix it here is we have step one, step two. So store the dogs in a variable, render the dogs to the screen, change the state, and then we have to render them to the screen again once we've changed it. So every time we change the state, we have to re-render uh, manually. And there we can see Betsy showing up. So the problem with that is every time we change our state, we have to manually re-render our HTML to reflect those changes, which um, basically means uh, we have to rely on, if you have a really big app, you have to rely on any time someone changes state in the JavaScript, you have to remember to uh, re-render the HTML. And it can just get really unruly and confusing. Um, it would be nice if there was a way to have your HTML automatically re-render to reflect changes in your JavaScript state. And so React solves that. That is the solution. Um, that's basically why React was invented. And it works really well for that purpose. Um, we get to, you know, the basic idea of React is we store a single variable um, or a series of variables. And um, we write our code in a way that our HTML will automatically be updated whenever those variables change. So uh, with that dogs array, we could add Betsy and we wouldn't have to worry about re-rendering. React does that for us. Um, and so that's the basic idea of React is it allows you to basically put, um, it's almost like variables in your HTML. Um, where your HTML automatically will update to reflect whatever kind of state you have. And you never have to worry about uh, re-rendering. It does it for you. Um, and it does it in an efficient way too, because uh, with this current approach, um, this loop 
it would have to recreate every item in this dogs array if you wanted to update it with a new dog. If you called this same one, then it would be recreating all those elements instead of just creating another one. So we could make another, um, another loop or something that only determines what has been updated and only changing those HTML elements. But by default, uh, the way that this would do it is by deleting all the dogs and then recreating them in the screen. And React is smart and um, it'll only re-render the specific parts of your DOM that uh, were affected by that state. So it basically looks at the state that you have and says, which variables are going to affect which parts of your HTML, and it only re-renders the relevant ones. And so it's fast, it's efficient, it's cool. Um, it allows for uh, more kind of larger apps to be built without all the added complexity that comes from uh, rendering all of your things in JavaScript. Um, that's my last slide. Um, imagine I had a bunch of really cool slides to continue and <laughs> I don't uh, we're gonna we're gonna wing it from here but um, I'll do a pause and see how everyone's feeling kind of a temperature check um, are people feeling good about this and any clarification yet yeah that was a pretty cool explanation of what react is Thank you, I'm glad. Also, I want to say thank you for this uh, nice uh, little lecture. I like the uh, good meta metaphor of, uh, of front-end languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It was really nice, uh, I think. And thank you for the uh, explanation differences uh, of rendering notes between uh, JavaScript and React. Thank you. It was very interesting to hear. <laughs> cool. I'm glad you liked it. I, hmm. I also enjoyed it. Uh, I think I think doing a visual representation was very was, was actually really useful. I just wish you know, like you said, split up the slides and could have got a little bit more in depth into the code. Because I do enjoy the visual elements, but the but actually seeing the code would have been helpful. But I understand yeah. well, it's everyone's I'll, first weeks with the with the oh, classes. I'll, so I'm gonna get into the code. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on going with this stuff. This isn't the end of the lecture. I know. You can eat, I mean anyone can feel free to stay or leave whenever, but um yeah. I will I will be continuing on with the lecture uh without these um without slides and we'll see how it goes. Um and I think it's a it's a fine time to kind of get into actual code anyways. So yeah, we can do that. So um, I think what I, so recap of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, I kind of got to that um, important JavaScript concept. So I haven't gotten to that. I'm, I think I'll start with that probably. So I'm going to go to uh, VS Code and there's a little preview of some React. I'll uh, I'll just create a new demo.js file. This is in a project that uh, we we will be creating together. Um, but I'm gonna start with just an empty file to do some demoing. So there's a couple important concepts. Um, I think I'll probably go over. I'll go over maps and I'll go over destructuring. So these are concepts that are in JavaScript and you might have touched on them already, but they're just notoriously confusing. Uh, they're just hard. And um, you have to see them a lot before they start to make sense. And um, they come up in React all the time. And so I want to kind of um, 
show you them again so that you can see them so that once we start seeing them and react more, um, they'll kind of make a little more sense, hopefully. Um, and I'll add another one, arrow functions. So these are like, destruction. Uh, so these are like kind of icky JavaScript concepts, but they're important to know. And I'll, again, I'll uh, put all these notes um, in, I'll put them on like Slack or something at the end of this. Um, important JavaScript concepts for React. So the first one is arrow functions. So I'm sure you've seen a normal function, function add nums. And we got num1, num2, return num1 plus num2. Um, so this is just an example function, a demo function. Um, and then we would call it by saying add nums. And we could say 1 and 2. And our result would be 3, I hope. Um, so this is kind of the normal function that you've seen. Now, how do we turn this into an arrow function? And do this, I'll say arrow function. So an arrow function would be const add nums. And it's the same way you declare a variable, right? With const or let. Um, but instead of assigning it to like, you know, a number or a variable or something. Oh, and I should actually one and two. I'm calling this one add nums one now because I'm making two of them and I don't want them to have the same name. JavaScript will complain. Um, okay, so an arrow function, we create a variable. We don't have to have this part, the variable, but um, like the arrow function itself is on the right side of this equals sign. We're assigning the variable to the function and that's how it looks. Um, you would put num1 and num2. And then here you could say num1 plus num2. So this would be a valid arrow function that does the exact same thing. So this is doing the exact same thing as this. And we can even, we don't even have to assign it to anything. It could just be that. But if it's just that, then we can't use it. We can't refer to it any, anywhere. It doesn't have a name. And so we can't refer to it. So that's why we assign it to a, a name, const add nums to. Uh, and just by the way, you might've seen the parameters not have parentheses around them. Or if you only have one parameter, you don't need parentheses. So if it was like that num1 plus 5. This is also a valid arrow function. Uh, once you have two parameters, then you need to put them inside parentheses. I always put my I always put parentheses around the parameters in an arrow function because it's just more readable in my opinion. It's easier to look at. Um, the arrow is where you say this is separating the parameters from the body of the function. And important, you'll notice the body of this function has curly braces. The body of this one doesn't. It doesn't have to if it's only one line. If it's one line, then it'll have an implicit return, which means you can imagine it says return right there, but you don't have to write it. If you write it on one line, then it doesn't have to have a return. It, it will return, but it'll return automatically whatever appears on this line. Um, otherwise, you can write it with curly braces and then say return. So that's the same thing. Um, 
You'll sometimes see error functions written on one line. You'll sometimes see them on two lines. If it's on two lines, it needs curly braces. Um, so that's an error function. They're a little bit confusing to look at, but the, the real value from them is when using maps and other uh, JavaScript um, array methods, which can be confusing, but uh, you'll see them a lot. Um, so maps are very common in JavaScript, and we're going to actually be using one for uh, this assignment today. So a map would be uh, it's it's in a method it's a an array method an array method, which remember a method is like a function on an object or a class. Uh, an object is an instance of a class, and um, you don't need to know about classes yet. But uh, objects, classes are a similar concept. Um, so a method is like a function that's part of an object. Um, and so an array method is a function that's part of an array. Um, and so let's say we have an array. We're going to need an array for this one. So let's, we could do dogs. Dogs equals, and I could say Lassie. Um, what were the others? Rex. And let's go with Betsy. Um, and just by the way, I'm getting these these uh, red squiggles. I have something on, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's this. This is making it so that I uh, get like a warning if I have unused variables. Um, and I think I could just delete that and it might fix it, yeah. That's a configuration file that uh, will come by default in this React app setup, um, that it'll yell at you if you have unused variables. Like this dogs array, we haven't used it anywhere else in our code. Um, it's what's called linting. Uh, don't worry about it, though. I got rid of it. OK, so we have our dogs array, and we're going to demonstrate maps. So a map is an array method that loops over the original array and creates a new array. So if we go dogs.map, map will take an arrow function inside. So I can just copy and paste an arrow function, um, except this one, the arguments aren't going to be valid for this. Uh, so the arguments in your arrow function are going to be whatever is in the array. So in this case, we have an array of strings. And so we're going to make an arrow function. And it's a little confusing to look at because it doesn't look like a loop. But map is going to loop through and call this function um, for every element in the array. And we access that element by using it as a parameter here in this arrow function. So we could say dog name, or we could just say dog. Let's go dog name, though. Um, so dog name is a parameter that in this, in the body part here, will be populated with um, each one of these elements in the array. So dog name will start as being Lassie, and then it'll be Rex, and then it'll be Betsy. And in this case, our arrow function is just taking that dog name and then returning it unchanged. So this map will not do anything. It'll just take each dog name. And what, what you can think of a map doing is applying a transformation to each element. So if you wanted to modify each element, say we wanted to make it uh, uppercase or something. I could say to uppercase. Now, this map will loop over our dog names, each string. And you could imagine it just copying and pasting Lassie and then uppercasing it and then returning it and then Rex. 
uppercasing it and then returning it. And I'm just, I'm demonstrating what that will look like once it is actually running. Dog name is the placeholder for each one of these values. So it'll loop through each element, do whatever this is, and the return. Well, for now, we're not actually storing the result of this map. We're not going to be receiving uppercase dogs. It doesn't apply a transformation to the original array. So none of the original things, none of the original dogs are going to be changed. But we can store uh, dogs new, or how about let's say dogs uppercase equals the result of this map. So now we're mapping over each dog name. We're returning an uppercase version of it. And all of them together will be returned into this variable. So this variable, dogs uppercase, will end up being an array with each of these names uppercased. Um, so that's what a map does. And you've probably seen for each. You do dogs dot for each. It's a similar thing. It'll take an arrow function, dog name. And then we could do console.log dog name or something. Um, for each is similar to a map, except for each doesn't return anything. So if we were to say const uh, dogs equals dogs dot for each or dogs uppercase or whatever, this will this variable will be empty at the end of it because for each, unlike map, for each doesn't returning it return anything. So for each is used if you just want to like do some separate action inside the, the function. If you want to return a modified version, oh, sorry. If you want to return a modified version, then you use map. So we can return a modified version of each element in this array. Um, OK. Destructuring. This is the last concept that you're going to use in React that's a little bit confusing. Um, it's basically creating variables from nested properties in objects or elements in arrays. So let's say we have a const person equals an object, and they have a name. Um, actually, let's go with dog. Let's stay on that theme. So we have a dog. The dog's name is Betsy, which I know is a cow name, but um, it could also be a dog name. We're not going to discriminate or limit these dogs to what they can be named. Um, age of, let's say, five. Okay, so we have a dog. Now, what if we want to store this dog's name in its own variable? We could say const dog name equals dog.name, right? So dog is an object, and we can use the dot to uh, go into that object and select a property inside that object. And the properties are just like variables that are nested within this object. It, an object is like a way of grouping uh, different variables. And so we have these different ones inside that all relate to this dog. We can access them using the dot. So this is one way of one way of retrieving a property of an object. Um, but what if you wanted the age too? You could say dog age 
equals dog age. That works. Um, it's a little bit verbose. It's a little long to write all this out. So there's an actual easier way to do it. Destructuring, destructuring, wait. We could say const, and I'm gonna, it's gonna yell at me for having variables with the same name. So I'm gonna comment those out. I'm gonna say const, um, blah equals dogs. So blah is going to equal dogs, right? So it would, or dog, sorry. Blah is going to be the same object as dog. But now I'm going to replace blah with an object, which you've never, you've potentially never seen this before. Why are we putting an object on the left side? of the equals sign. Well, when the right side has an object, and then the left side, this isn't actually, we're not creating a new object here. What we're saying is whatever this thing is, which it's an object, we want to imagine going into that object and retrieving whatever properties we name here. So I could put name right there, and that'll say, go into the object on the right-hand side of this equals sign and select this property. I could, uh, it, it has to be the same, uh, the same name as the property. So here we were saying const dog name equals dog dot name. Here we're saying name equals dog. And then here I could say console log name and name uh, ignore that. Name will end up being uh, the dog's name property. So we're kind of drilling into the dog object and selecting properties inside of it and creating variables out of them. So this is creating a new variable right here called name. And I could do another one called age. Um, and a small detail, if you wanted to change the, the names of these, of the actual variables, um, we would have to do that, um, which is a little confusing. It's the, the syntax starts to get confusing, but this is all you need to know at first. Um, you can select the properties of an object um, by assigning, um, assigning the object to this like destructuring kind of syntax here. And it'll create new variables um, based on the properties inside. So it's like, uh, yeah. And you can do the same thing with an array. So I could, I have like my dogs array up here. I'll comment that out and bring it down here. We have our dogs array. You could say const um, dog one and dog two equals dogs. So this is this top one is destructuring an object. This bottom one is destructuring an array. Um, and what the array one does, the, the variable names can be arbitrary. It's the positions that matter. So dog one will be Lassie and dog two will be Rex. So this is um, this is basically the same as going um, const dog one equals dogs at zero and dog two equals dogs at one. So doing this is the same as doing this right here. So this is destructuring an array. So destructuring object, destructuring an array. Um, it's just another thing. JavaScript has all these features that kind of just build up over time. And you know, when you're learning it, you're like, why? Why are there all these different ways of doing everything? It's confusing. And 
it just keeps on going. And it's because when people are coding for years and years and years, they get so comfortable with something that they're like, it could be a little bit shorter the way you do this. Um, there could be a shortcut. And so uh, that's just the way it is. You have to learn the shortcut ways of doing things like uh, arrow functions, maps, um, destructuring. Uh, and so those are, I think, the three most probably problematic, difficult concepts to learn in JavaScript that are going to come into play a lot in React. So I just want to make sure that you um, are at least familiar with what they do. The syntax, you know, you can give it a minute and the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it. But um, I'll pause again, see how everyone's feeling. And then after that, we can jump into actually writing some React code. How's everyone feeling? It's great, thank you. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm just I'm retyping what you have just done to have a better understanding of it. So like what you're saying is for this deconstruction, as long as, I mean, obviously you said you could give them different variable names, but currently that's too big of a scope for right now. So essentially you, you were just saying, you're just taking the names of what's inside the object and saying, hey, go look for these certain things inside this object. And then those names are then the variables that you can bring up via console log and other things of that sort. Exactly, yep. And then, and then the and then similar concept with arrays, but instead of it being the direct thing that you are looking for, the variables are equating to the what's in there. So if there's like four things in there, you have to create four variables. Yep. And nice. yep. And and it's the positions that matter with the array. So we have dog one in the first position, dog two in the second position. And uh you don't actually have to to grab all of them. Like we don't have in, in object destructuring, we can only grab one property if we want. And that's one of the one of the benefits of it. Um, just grabbing one, one thing that we want. Uh, and same thing with the array. You can see we're grabbing two elements, whereas this array has three. Okay. So what if question you just wanted the third thing in the array? How would you do that? Yeah. So that is actually not the the better way to do that is the old school way just saying dog three equals dogs uh okay i guess index two right because yes there's zero, it's zero yes so yeah. so essentially if you want something specific you should do it the old school way but if you mm -hmm. want like like uh a, a, I guess a, another version of it question mark that's the this way to do it yeah, and in this way is really like um, you'll see object destructuring uh, probably more than array destructuring. Okay. And one thing about array destructuring that is kind of nice is it's it's kind of a hack for returning. Well, it's used as a hack for returning two variables from a function. So you might have learned a function in JavaScript can only return one thing, one variable. But if you want, you can return an array with two items. And then when you call that function, you can instantly destructure the items. And, and I, could, I could show you that here. I could say function return uh, two things. And I'll just make it really simple. I'll just say return. And well, let's say const thing one equals hi, const thing two equals hello. Now, what if we wanted to return both of these strings from this function? Well, we can't. In JavaScript, you couldn't you couldn't do that. That's not allowed. But you can return an array that has both of those things. And then when I call this function, I might say const thing one 
thing two equals return two things. So we understand that this function is going to return thing one and thing two as the first and second element in an array. And so we can destructure it immediately. Um, and it's as if this function has returned two things. And that's where you'll see it used in React. Um, in React, you use something called use state. Use state. And use state will return two variables. One of them is a state variable, like whatever you and, and we'll get to this, but one of them is a state, and then the other one is a function for changing that state. So we understand that use state, which is a React thing that we'll get to, returns these two different things. Um, so that's where you see array destructuring a lot is if an array or if a function wants to return an array of like a set amount of things. There's other things too, but I think that's probably good for the basics. And we can actually start doing some React code. Um, I know I'm starting to go long. I always kind of do, but <laughs> I want to give a good explanation for everything. Um, OK, I'm seeing some some things in the chat. Um, Natalie, I've been wanting to learn array and object destructuring for some time now. Seemed to be a mystery. Cool. I'm glad you found that useful. Um, and Tom said, we can do the same storing a modified array with for each as well. We just need to create a new variable and put a value on every iteration to it. Yep. Yep. So we can use for each to create a new array. Uh, we just need to create the variable beforehand and then like push items onto that variable, like that empty array or something. Um, Tatiana, I would love to add reminder about rest parameter. Yep. Yeah, so uh, the rest parameter is one other thing um, that we could briefly go over. So um, when you're destructuring, um, if you have a bunch of things, so I say I could say name, age, and then breed um, is, let's say, a Samoyed. If we want, we can create, in the case of object destructuring, we could create a new object that has all the rest of the properties contained in it by saying um, other properties like that. I think that'll work. Yeah. And you can see my... Um, this is my IntelliSense, uh, or my LSP, my language server protocol, is showing a little window that this is what this variable will end up looking like. Other properties is going to be the rest of the properties that weren't already explicitly stated over here. So that's using the rest of them. And you can look it up if you want. It's called rest. Uh, Specifically in the in terms of object destructuring, rest. Um, array destructuring, the rest will get all the rest. It'll get an array with all the rest of the uh, elements at the end. Um, so I could say dot, 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 and then we can call it whatever we want. Usually you'll see rest. So I said other properties, I would usually call that rest. And that creates a new variable that has all the things that you didn't specifically destructure. Um, more about the extension for VS Code I'm using for the tool tips. I, I think it's built in. I think if you make variables and stuff, you should be able to see this. Um, <laughs> let me know if I'm, if I'm mistaken. Um, if not, then I'll definitely look into it and see. Um, I think what, what really is allowing for this is a uh, TypeScript language uh, feature. So it could be that you have to download like a TypeScript extension. 
but I don't think so. No. Yeah, I think I think it should be built in. Um, if you're having trouble not getting that showing up, then uh, let me know and I'll look into it later. Um, okay, so let's let's get to some React code. How about so? We kind of talked about the React background here, right? Uh, the nice thing about React is that um, when you're storing all your variables in state and then you want to update your state, you have to remember to re-render everything, which is just a pain. Um, and so that's the purpose of React. So let's talk about actual some React code. And for that, um, we can start, we might as well start with looking at the um, React documentation, because I think they have a pretty good, if I'm remembering right, they, they have some pretty good like uh, documentation here. Uh, someone says, name says deprecated. Yeah, so you generally don't want to name a variable name um, specifically. That's like a, a restricted, it's a, a key keyword in JavaScript. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it'll actually give you like an error error, but it might. So yeah, you, you sometimes want to stay away from naming a variable name. Like if I were to do, oh, if I were to do const name equals Rio. Oh, it's allowing me here. So I I don't know if that'll actually give you an error error, but it might give you a like syntax error. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I could get into actual. Okay, I'll just I'll get to the assignment. I think that's that's a good next step for us. So. Um, let's start all, and I like to walk through doing the actual like GitHub stuff too, so that you all can just get a reminder of how to set that all up. So, um, and I know I'm going over time, so if anyone needs to leave, um, that's fine too. I, I'll be going through all this and recording it and, uh, you can watch the recording later if you don't have time, but. Uh, let's start by making a new repository for this project. Um, and since I've made a lot so far, I think this is like my third React to do to do app. <laughs> but I think I can just call it React. Uh, sorry, React to dos two. How about? Um, and in case I wasn't. Uh, I didn't clarify how I got there. You can go to like up to your name or wherever, find the repositories thing and go to new over here. Click on new, uh, create a new repository in GitHub. And I'm gonna call it react to do's two. Don't need a description. Don't need to change anything really. Um, yeah, that's all good. Just create repository. So this is an empty repository. The, the nice thing about creating it on GitHub, you could create it just on your computer, but create it on GitHub first is good for um, automatically having your local one linked to one that already exists. So we can like set it up to be linked on GitHub. Otherwise you have to um, push one that you make locally, but um, so yeah, this it looks like this page has changed a little bit recently, but we should be able to copy this right here. Um, I'll go to my terminal. And so after copying this right here, um, which is the, um, the URL for this repository, sorry, should be able to go to your terminal, go to the right folder, so CD, or let's see where I am right now. Print working directory, I'll CD back one. So I already have React to do in this folder, but then I'll, it's a little bigger. 
Um, so I'll do git clone. Make sure you're in the right repository. Uh, this will create a new uh, repository. So, so don't create one. Like if I were to do make dir and make a new directory um, and then go into that and do this, it uh, wouldn't work right. So you have to go into the parent folder of where you want this. And then you say git clone and then paste that URL. Oh, let me go back, find it again. Um, okay, there we go. Git clone. I cloned an empty repository. I think that's fine. Yep. Um, I'll CD into it. React to do's two. And then I can open it in VS Code. Uh, you can open it however you want. Um, I have it set up to where I can open it from my command line and if you don't have that set up, I'll, well, either way, I'll put a, a link. I might have to be reminded, but I'll, I'll put a link for how to set this up, but you can say code dot, and it'll open VS code in the current directory. So I was just in my terminal. Now that's opening VS code at the spot that my terminal was in. Um, so now we have, it's empty because I remember I didn't, make anything yet, but we're going to go to the next step. So clone an empty repo, uh, navigate your terminal to the new project directory. And so we're here, create a new to do application using the command. So um, I'm going to copy this npm create v latest dot dash 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 template react. This is um, creating a React app is just complicated. And so there's like um, helper uh, commands you can run. Um, and this is like the classic way to create a, a React app. And it's a little bit opinionated, like whoever, whoever made this template uh, set some things up in a certain way and you could change them. But this is kind of the default that everyone like is accepting as the standard for this is a good start for a React app. Because unlike a JavaScript app, it's not just a single file. Uh, there's kind of a whole thing, a, a whole bunch of files that go into a React app, and you'll see. So I'm going to run this command. Make sure you're in the right directory, and it'll create a bunch of files. So this is our React app. Then the next step is I run npm install. Um, oh, I should also note, you have to have Node installed first on your computer. So if you don't have Node, uh, you need to install it. Node, JS. Go here, install it. Um, there might be a couple steps involved in it, but Node is, um, it's a runtime for JavaScript um for outside of your website outside of a in like a browser which basically means um so far we've been running javascript only in in reference to your like browser in in your website because your browser is equipped to run javascript so if you're using chrome or whatever kind of browser you're using um it by default will know how to run javascript but your computer doesn't come default. Like you can't just feed JavaScript into your CPU. That's not how it works. And so Node allows you to do that uh, without having a browser do it for you. Um, React is still a front end thing and it still will be running on the website uh, or on a website that you make. Um, but Node allows you to basically turn React code into normal JavaScript because there's certain things in React that are not valid JavaScript on their own. And so it has to kind of convert the, the makeshift JavaScript that is React and turn it into actual JavaScript. That's what Node allows you to do. So um, I could go on a huge tangent about Node and NPM and what all this stuff means, but uh, it'll just take forever. So <laughs> let's, you'll learn more about it if you go into the, the backend unit on um, 
node and express and stuff. But for now, uh, run that first command and then run npm install, which I just ran. And what that does is it installs all the third-party code that allows for this app to work. And then npm run dev, which stands for development. So this will run, this is basically how you start the app. Um, and then you have to go to this URL here, HTTP colon slash slash localhost, blah, blah, blah. Uh, copy this. And, and these are all outlined. These are all steps outlined in the, the thing here. Um, yep, install the dependencies using that command, run npm run dev, and then you copy that URL, open up a, a new browser tab, paste that in to the URL, and then you get this. And this is actually the, def this is like the basic default uh, React app based on the, um, the like template that we used. So we're not getting a, an empty web page because they have basically, someone wrote some React code that is this kind of base thing that we see, the, the landing page for this app. And so, um, yeah, all this stuff that's appearing on your page, we're actually, it's being created using React and we're gonna delete it and put our own stuff in. Um, so, and I'll, I'll put this side by side. Uh, oop, not that. Side by side, my browser and my code, because I like to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm on my laptop, which means it's all really small. So maybe I'll zoom out a bit. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start. I have basically this terminal. Once you once you run npm run dev, uh, the terminal that you have running that command will be it'll hang. It'll be a persistent, like, um, you can't do anything more in that terminal. That terminal is dedicated to running this app now. And so you have to make a new terminal, uh, which you can click this little plus if you're doing terminals in VS Code. You can click that little plus, it'll make a new one. Um, and then in this new terminal, I'm going to use it for Git stuff. Um, otherwise, I'd have to stop my my app from running anytime I wanted to do Git stuff. Um, and yeah, the reason I do that is because they want us to create a new branch and commit. So basically, we're, we're going to commit the project as is right now. It's at like kind of a default state. Um, but we're going to, we basically got the initial scaffold set up. And so I'm going to uh, do a git commit or git add commit and push acp git add dash a for all or dot either way same ish thing git commit dash m um initial setup and then i want to create a new branch so i'm going to do git checkout dash b Lesson underscore one underscore one is what they wanted. Hey, Pop, are you okay? Sorry. Sorry. I'm watching a dog right now and it has pneumonia. I feel bad. Um, okay. So we have this new uh, branch and now we need to uh, push the changes. So I'm going to do git push. Um, and if you just do git push, you'll probably get an error um, that says there's no remote origin set up to track blah, 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 blah. Um, so the way to fix that is you can say git push origin uh, lesson one underscore one. Uh, this will fix whatever that default error is. Um, and cool. So there's our, our git add, git commit, and git push. Git add, git commit, 
uh, oh, create a new branch and then push. Um, so now on our GitHub, we should have, if I refresh this page, this should have our, yeah. So this is like what our project looks like right now. It's kind of the default um, React app. And now I want to go in and actually uh, write some React code, finally. Sorry, I know this is taking a while to get to. Um, OK. So it wants us to um, yeah, remove the existing code and create our own to-dos. And so that's what we'll do. So uh, a React app is going to have a lot of folders and files, and it's going to look really crazy at first. And eventually, you will understand what all these files and folders are. For right now, um, it's just going to be overwhelming to try to understand all of them unless you really want. I mean, it, it can be nice. I, I like to sometimes figure out what everything does. So um, if you're a curious person, feel free to uh, check it all out. But uh, the really important parts are going to be in source, SRC. This is where all of your like actual code is going to be. Um, in our app.jsx, this is kind of the entry point. Um, this is where you're going to start writing code. And so this is actual React code right here. Um, and it's going to look weird. Um, and another note, you'll you'll see the file extension is JSX instead of JS. JSX is basically uh, JavaScript that is for React. It's this weird stuff. Um, it's uh, and and that's that's one of the key things about React um, is React allows you to write um, HTML inside your JavaScript. It's a very important concept about React. Maybe I'll even put a comment here so you can all. React allows for JavaScript inside, or sorry, <laughs> HTML inside JavaScript. Hi, Hi Pop. Um, so, so far you've had HTML files and JavaScript files, and they've all been separate. And now you have, this is JavaScript and it has what looks like HTML inside. And it's not technically HTML. It looks just like it. There's a couple key differences. Um, it's technically JSX. JSX is like the JavaScript version of HTML that React allows you to make. And it's pretty much specific to React. Um, there's other other like front end libraries that have a similar concept. Um, but this is not valid JavaScript code on its own. And so React comes with like its own uh, parser thing that will turn this into uh, real JavaScript, not uh, if you were to try to run this like normal JavaScript in the browser, it would break your browser. It would not work. Um, and so that's what React does, is it converts this into um, functioning JavaScript. Um, so what React is kind of made up of is you have a bunch of different files. Uh, that's a common thing you'll see in React is you have a, a lot of different files. Um, and each file tends to be a single component. And your page will be made up of a lot of components that are nested and um, basically you could have a component for a button. Uh, or you could have a component for a whole like layout of your web page. Um, that's just in React, you kind of, and, it, and it's a little bit like up to you um, to decide how you're gonna section things off. 
Um, but that's one of the key cool things about React is that it allows you to create individual components um, that you can reuse over and over. And so here, this is our kind of base component and it is a function. And also you'll see all these imports. This is in JavaScript, how you uh, get code from different files into, from one file into the other. Um, yeah. So the, the kind of base concept in React is you have a function that returns some of this stuff, some HTML, but it's not actually HTML. It's JSX, JSX. And that's it. You have, uh, well, that's not it, but that's the basic idea is you have a bunch of functions that return some, what looks like HTML, and then you piece them all together to create your web page. Um, and if you remember, I was saying the kind of one of the core benefits of React is that it allows you to have some state where the HTML automatically um, updates when you update the state. And this is part of it, is the fact that you can have HTML in your JavaScript. So that's one of the key things is that with your HTML in your JavaScript now, you can put variables inside here, JavaScript variables inside your HTML. And so that's part of it. The second part of it is you have to use special variables. And that's what this is. Uh, and this, this is, I didn't write any of this. This is what comes default in the template. But if you look count and set count, those are relating to, in this example right here, oh, we have count is zero. If I click on that, it's updating the count. And what that's basically showcasing is that this variable right here, count, is being displayed right here in this button. So we have a button that's saying on click, change the count, add one to it. And then here, that, that's this is the important part. You have this variable count inside the button. And whenever the count changes, it automa React automatically will um, update the DOM um, to match. So we don't have to call a rendering function. We don't have to re-render everything. The count variable is inside of the DOM and the DOM will re-render at the parts where it needs to in order to reflect changes in this variable. But that count variable, it has to be made like this. It has to be made using use state. And it looks confusing, but that is kind of one of the um, one of the contracts you have with React, if you want to update, if you want React to update your DOM uh, according to like a variable, that variable needs to be a special variable that you get through use state. That's uh, the unfortunate reality is that when using React, you can't make variables like const count equals three, you can't make them like that anymore. Well, you, you can and you will use variables like this, but if you want the variable to be uh, in your DOM and you want your DOM to update when that variable changes, you have to use this specific way of doing it. Um, okay, and I'm gonna, uh, this dog here is whining and I feel bad. So I'm gonna, probably speed through the rest of this. And um, uh, take care of walking this dog. OK, um, so I'm going to delete everything here. Uh, all this JSX, I'm going to delete it all the way up to here to where it's only this, what looked like an like a diamond. And but these are actually, I have a, a special font that combines characters. This character is really a uh, greater than, less than. It's like a, a normal HTML tag, except it doesn't have anything in it. That's called a, a fragment. Um, 
So we're going to delete everything inside these fragments, and then we can write our own stuff. We're going to make an unordered list to store some to-dos, and then we're going to make a h1 that says to-dos. Um, and now we need to create an array of to-dos. So const to-dos equals an array with some strings in it. And I'll say um, walk this dog and eat some cookies and learn React. OK, so these are our to-dos. And now we want to render this these to-dos um, inside our, um, our unordered list here. And we're going to use a map to do that. And I'm sorry, but I don't have fully time to explain everything in, in as much detail as I <laughs> wished. But uh, we're just going to speed through this. So to-dos.map. Because remember, we're, we're looping through this to-dos array. Um, and for each item, we want to return, well, an li. Uh, because we have a ul, an unordered list. So we want to return an li with each of these to-dos. So I'm going to say to-do. I'm going to pass that in as a parameter into this arrow function. And then here, because we're in JSX mode, because we're in React territory, we can just write our HTML inside our um, JavaScript. So I can return an li. And then if you want to put a variable inside, which you, you can see I have these curly braces here. Uh, curly braces inside of your JSX is how you put variables. It's kind of like uh, like string interpolation, how like uh, const string equals, and you can have the back ticks. And then if you want, Hello, I'm, and then if you add like a variable name, uh, my name, how you have string interpolation like that, you can have a similar thing in JSX using just these um, curly braces. So I'm going to put some curly braces in here and then a variable inside, and it'll turn that into text. Uh, sorry, I wrote text uh, to do. Um, and then one last thing, this needs a, each each of these to-dos needs a key. And I actually, I forgot, the way they really want this is the to-dos should be an array uh, of objects. And so each object should have a title and a ID. The ID is a number. Oh, what's going on? Title. Comma. ID. Oh, I was doing equals. It needs to be a colon. OK. ID zero. Sorry, this is starting to look confusing. So. Um, eat some cookies also needs to be an object. So each of these are an object with a title that's like the name of the to-do and then an ID that's a number and it can be whatever number you want. Um, title, ID, and my formatter should hopefully help make this make a little bit more sense. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, now that we have this, I'm going to put a key in here and the key is going to be, um, to do dot ID and the, uh, the text inside is going to be to do dot title. Okay, um, give me one sec. I'll be right back. This.
dog is having a freak out. Okay, dog on the kitchen table. I'm probably going to have to go. <laughs> I apologize, everyone. Um, but uh, hopefully you uh, got a good intro here. I know that the React stuff, there's just, there's too much to really uh, cover in, in a small amount of time. Um, but yeah, basic idea is we have our array of to-dos. We're using a map to load them into our DOM. And then if they get updated, they'll update immediately. Uh, we're not using use state though. So I I didn't see in the instructions um, wanting us to use uh, use state to make that variable, but I could have gotten that wrong. Um, let's see, inside the app function, create an array. Okay, so yeah, they, they do probably want this to be an array uh, using uh, use state. So I would say const to do's and set to do's equals use state. And then in this use state thing, I'm going to paste the value of that array right there. This isn't how I would typically use use state um, for using an array of stuff. Um, well, how about we store the array up here? Let's say const um, starter to do's equals that. And then we can say use state equals starter to do's. So the initial state of to do's is going to be whatever we pass in here starter to do's. And then if we want to change to do's, we use set to do's, which is a method that will allow us to change to do's. And that, all of that together is what will allow our DOM to update automatically when we push a new to do in. We could say, set to do's equal to, or sorry, set to do's is a function, set to do's um, equal to to do's um, dot push, and then you could add a new to do. But you don't, you don't need to do that part for this assignment. And honestly, I don't even know if, if they need you using use state yet. It's possible they don't. So you could just do this. Or put this inside the app here, like that. OK, I'll zoom out for one last look at this. This is what your app should look like at the end of this. Um, I'll post the recording. I'll post the slides um, and some of the, the code comments uh, or the the code stuff that I walked through and yeah. And I'm going to take this doggy on a walk. OK. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rio. Thank you, Rio. Yep. Thank Thanks you. a lot. It was super clear and super understandable, like the <laughs> best uh, explanation of reactivity I have ever heard, actually. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, and I, I forgot to show. This is the final result. Amazing our to-dos showing up in our app. OK. Thanks for all the help. Um, yep. When are you going to be doing another lecture or group session? Yeah, I'll be doing them every Tuesday, uh, same time. All right, I think I'll be joining you every Tuesday if I can. <laughs> cool. OK. Uh, by the way, do we need to fill in uh, f some form or whatever? Because like previous mentors asked us to to fill in forms, they are all different. Do we need to do that uh, here with you as well? Uh, forms, form. like for um, your attendance? 
Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that forms were like some kind of uh, like marking us that we were on this uh, webinar actually. Uh, but uh, some of them were with uh, like a question uh, field. Yeah, so I think on your assignment submission, you indicate uh, which kind of uh, sessions you attended if you did. We do, we do. I could be yeah. wrong. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I'm in charge of uh, taking attendance and um, filling a form out that says who is here. So I will be doing that and you don't have to worry about it. I have the recording and everything so I can uh, verify who is here. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll uh, see you next week. Very cool. Thank see you. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.